Want to be a drug addict? If you live in the U.S., chances are you probably already are. The U.S., land of the free, of MTV, and of legal drugs. This might just be what makes America great. A place where our doctors prescribe us pills that we don't need for conditions that don't exist. It's a win-win. Big Pharma gets bigger and richer, and we get higher or just die. The story was different 50 years ago when John went down to his dentist's office to get his wisdom teeth pulled, and the doctor gave him aspirin as pain medication. This was a time when young men went to war and women worked their asses off at home to save the country from collapse. Now, we get high, play video games, watch YouTube, and complain when somebody doesn't call us the right gender. And these days, if old Johnny Boy goes down to the dentist and gets some work done, it's dealer's choice. Vicodin, Percocet, Codeine, you name it. Whatever company happens to be in bed with your doctor that day. And if you don't have private insurance that pays for your drugs, no problem. Sign up for Medicaid, and you'll definitely be able to get free drugs through them. <laughs> Hello everyone, Thought Monkey here. Today we're going to explore the issue of what Big Pharma doesn't want anybody to know. First, what exactly is the pharmaceutical industry? To make a long story short, it's a business that creates drugs for use as medications. It's important to note that it's not a terrible industry. In fact, they have made some very important discoveries like insulin, which has saved millions of lives, or the countless vaccines that have protected us from at one point very common diseases like measles and hepatitis. The problem is not the idea of pharmaceuticals. Drugs are neither good nor bad. They can either be helpful or dangerous depending upon their use. The problem with Big Pharma is that it is literally killing people, and it's making a profit doing so. And our government is basically encouraging it. You may ask yourself how an industry that's supposed to be providing us medication which is regulated by the Federal Drug Administration, an organization responsible for protecting the public health by assuring the safety, efficacy, and security of human drugs, is killing us. Let's first look at the health statistics. 99% of hydrocodone worldwide use is in the US. We know this drug more colloquially as Vicodin, which is just a company that makes hydrocodone. This is a drug that the FDA rates as less dangerous as marijuana, but in 2011 caused nearly 100,000 emergency department visits. The US makes up 5% of the world's population, but consumes 80% of its opioid consumption. On average, 40 deaths per day are linked specifically to prescription opioids and over 100,000 deaths per year linked with prescription drugs in general. This is far more deaths than what illegal street drugs cause. Prescription drugs are now the fourth leading cause of death in the US. Okay, you get the point. Prescription drugs are dangerous and they are killing people. But now the question is, why are people taking them if they're so dangerous? The answer lies in the incredible reach of Big Pharma. The pharmaceutical industry spends between 30 and 60 billion dollars a year on advertising their miracle drugs. You've all seen their ads. Blue skies, beautiful couple, trees, having trouble sleeping, bad knees, buy or pill, and feel like new. And then the 10 second list of possible side effects, which always include, and in extreme cases, death. The folks that regulate these advertisements have a budget of only $9 million. Do you really think a $9 million budget is enough to regulate something that is more than 6,000 times that size? This is not a David vs. Goliath story. This is the ant versus the elephant. Big Pharma is also notorious for selling drugs that aren't approved for certain symptoms, a practice called off-label promotion. For example, your doctor might prescribe you an antidepressant because she or he believes it will help your migraines. This practice is at times legal and at other times illegal. If illegal, you will learn shortly, however, that the fine is usually smaller than the profit these companies make. Big Pharma might just consider it another tax of doing business, and yes, it has in some cases caused death. There is also the idea that Big Pharma creates new illnesses and solves them with their pills. Sounds like a conspiracy theory, right? But actually, it makes a lot of sense and you've probably seen an ad that talks about some made-up illness and a pill to fix it without thinking twice. For example, restless leg syndrome. Is that really an illness? When I sit down for long periods of time, my leg moves, but I think it's because I'm bored and I don't want to be sitting. Which, by the way, is an extremely unnatural position for our bodies to be in. I mean, where in nature can you find anything like the modern chair, and when in history did we ever have to sit down for 8 hours a day? Yeah, our legs are restless simply because we're not supposed to be sitting down for 8 hours a day doing the work that we are in the modern age. But yeah, if you want a pill for that imaginary illness, guess what? It exists. Go on WebMD. There are dozens of recommended drugs you can take for your lively leg. So it's easy to see that these drugs kill people, and it's pretty easy to understand why people buy them. I mean, the consumer here is fucked. We're relying on a budget the size of an ant to regulate the behavior of an elephant, and it gets worse because the ant, or in this case our government, ends up helping the elephant or Big Pharma. 
The government-sponsored health programs Medicaid and Medicare, part of the ANT in our example, actually perpetuate this problem. Both of these are government health programs funded by our taxes that provide health care to people who either can't afford it on their own or are old. Healthcare, however, unfortunately often just means providing pills for people who have problems. In this respect, our taxes are literally killing us. You can actually think of it like a cycle, and I'll explain that in a minute. First, how is our government fucking us so badly? Big Pharma donates millions and millions of dollars to our Congress members and even presidents. Yes, even Obama was given a whopping $1.2 million in his 2008 election by Big Pharma. You know when a friend lends you money you feel obliged to pay them back whether it's in dollars or favors? Same shit in Washington. The favors here though come in enormous tax breaks, tiny fines for violating laws such as the prohibition of off-label promotion, and of course the revolving door between the FDA and Big Pharma. One current example of a tax break is under the Republican Trump care plan where Big Pharma would get $28 billion in breaks. The company Johnson & Johnson alone would reap in $19.8 billion. The biggest ever Big Pharma fine for illegal activity, on the other hand, was $2.3 billion when the company Pfizer, the Viagra company, was found mismarketing a handful of their drugs. That same year, the company made $43 billion in gross profit despite such a fine. That same year, the company was found guilty in causing the deaths of at least five Nigerian guinea pig children in a trial run of one of their drugs. Wow, and let's just say the more research I did, the worse it got. And what about those revolving doors? According to one study in some scientific magazine that only 10 people probably read, it says that between 2001 and 2010, half of all blood researchers in the FDA that reviewed drugs between those years moved on to work for Big Pharma. This makes sense though. The FDA doesn't offer the salary that the billion dollar pharma industry does. And frustrated yet dedicated FDA members have also talked about the fact that they can't stop certain drugs from being approved because their bosses are being pressured by big pharma lobbyists. In essence, the thing that is supposed to regulate big pharma is being regulated by big pharma. So here's the cycle. Big Pharma wants to make money on their new drug. They have to convince doctors to prescribe it, and they do so in many different ways. One way is by using beautiful saleswomen or men because they recruit from modeling agencies. But let's move on. The doctor then has a patient with such and such problem, headache, restless leg syndrome, whatever it is. Let's use depression as an example. The doctor then prescribes the pill that the pharma rep just pitched. The patient's insurance or Medicaid or Medi-Cal paid for by our taxes or the patient alone then pays for the prescription that he or she may or may not actually need. The patient doesn't know, however, that they just got a pill that includes one drug for depression and another to sedate the person from intense agitation. It then causes that person to go on a rampage, and I'm not kidding, this actually happened. Look up Joseph Westbecker. The pill, Prozac. Big Pharma makes billions because of their strategic Prozac marketing campaign, but gets a slap on the wrist for their negligent business dealings. Joseph and six others die due to his rampage, not to mention however many other rampage killings are due to Prozac side effects, but Big Pharma makes billions and gets to spread the love to the FDA, Congress, and even the President. They all high five, suck each other's dicks, and make a shitload of money. This though is just the tip of the motherfucking iceberg. And well, I thought you should know. The moral of the story, don't do drugs guys. All it does is fuck you up and make rich people richer. And if you do do drugs, just stick to weed. Okay, maybe mushrooms from time to time. I guess ayahuasca seems to be pretty cool. And a little bit of ecstasy I guess is cool too. But seriously, stay away from anything legal. Thanks for watching this episode of Thought Monkey. Subscribe to stay updated and please hit the like button below. It makes a big difference. Until next time.